Hi, I'm going to show you a few examples of solving interference problems. So, uh, first we're going to look at this situation where the observer is 7 meters from one speaker and 4 meters from the other, and we know that the speakers are emitting a wavelength of 1.5 meters, and we're going to try to predict the type of interference for this particular observer. As with most interference problems, the first step is to determine the path difference, which is pretty easy for this one. So the, uh, the path difference is just how far you are from one source minus how far you are from the other, so 7 minus 4. Okay. And so to determine the type of interference, what I recommend you do is take the path difference and divide by the wavelength. When you do that, if it's an integer, you know that it's constructive. If it's a half integer, you know it's destructive. And if it's neither of those things, then it, um, the in interference is neither constructive nor destructive. So let's do that. So delta D over path difference over the wavelength will be 3 over 1.5, giving us 2. Okay, so that is an integer. Therefore, it is constructive interference. And the physical interpretation would be that we would observe a relatively large wave or loud sound at that particular location for that particular wavelength and that arrangement of um, speakers and observer. Okay, so let's do a little bit more complicated one. So with this one we have a speaker A at a location of 3, uh, the observer at a location of 8, and then speaker B at an unknown location X, and then we know that the wavelength that these speakers are emitting is 4 meters. And our job is to determine the values of x for which we get destructive interference. Okay, that's our ultimate goal. So x for destructive. But as usual, the first step is to determine the path difference symbolically. Okay, we can't get a number in this case, but we get it symbolically in terms of x, and then we'll worry about the destructive interference later. Okay, so let's find distance to a. Distance to a. 8 minus 3 giving us 5, distance to B, X minus 8. And then we need to subtract in order to determine the path difference. Typically what you want to do is take the bigger minus the smaller, but in this case we actually don't know which one's bigger, so we're going to have to put an absolute value sign around our answer. So I'm just going to pick arbitrarily which one to put first. I'm going to put distance to B first. Okay, so X minus 8, and then I'm going to subtract distance to A, and I end up with a path difference of the absolute value of X minus 13. Okay, if you did the reverse, this minus this, you just get 13 minus X, absolute value, that would be fine too. Okay, so the problem as I stated it was we need to find the position for which we're of uh, speaker B for which we get destructive interference for this particular observer. So we set the path difference equal to a half integer multiple of the wavelength. So let's do that. So delta D equals M plus one half times the wavelength. And then we go ahead and throw in this for our delta D. So X minus 13 absolute value will be M plus one half times the wavelength. And we would get right answers actually if we got rid of the absolute value sign, but we wouldn't get all of the uh, correct solutions. So I'm going to uh, leave that there. So we need to start ripping things away from the absolute value sign. And so, uh, or, or sorry, from the X. So to get rid of the absolute value sign, you put a plus or minus on the other side. And then I'm going to add 13. So I'll do both those algebra steps at once. And I get uh, 13 plus or minus M plus 1 half. And I'm just going to go ahead and throw in the number for uh, lambda just to make our lives a little easier. And so now all I have to do is throw in, throw in m. Okay? So I can throw in m equals 0, m equals 1, m equals 17, whatever, whatever I want. Okay? So I'm going to throw in uh, m equals 0. For m equals 0, I get two answers. I get x, equal, if I do the plus, um, I get 15. And if I do the minus, I get 11. So what the physical interpretation is, if we put speaker B at a location of 11 or 15, we're going to get destructive interference at this particular location. Okay, and of course you can throw in M equals 1. Let's go ahead and do that and then we'll call it good. If I throw in M equals 1, I'm going to get X equals 19 and I'm also going to get 9. 
or sorry, <laughs> seven. Okay, so then uh, the issue with that one is, it's kind of interesting, is that actually doesn't work because uh, that's suggesting that B is over here and all of our calculations are, are based on the, on the fact that B is to the right. So this one we actually can't, uh, we can't use. So there, there'd be my first three and you can throw in M equals two uh, and keep going if you want. There's actually an infinite number of solutions as we move uh, further and further this direction, okay? So um, yeah, so that's a couple of different interference problems. Um, hope you enjoy this and uh, thanks for watching.